I'm Wendy with Loaves and Dishes and today we're going to be cooking a spiral sliced ham. I've got some things I want to show you. It's actually Christmas morning and this is my real kitchen. Um, we're not in the studio today so you're just going to have to bear with the bad lighting and everything. Sarah, this is a maple pecan flavored double glazed spiral sliced ham. You're going to look for a the pre-cooked ham, most of these spiral sliced hams are already cooked. Um, and you will see inside here is a packet. You want to pay attention. This is the glaze that you're going to put on the top. Um, the glaze for this one is already done. You just sprinkle it on the top at the end. So cut your tag off and keep it. Don't, don't throw this away or you'll be digging it out of the trash can. You got to look at how much your ham weighs. Mine weighs 10 pounds almost exactly. Keep your tag and look at your weight and you are going to multiply the poundage. So I've got mine's 10 pounds and you're going to cook it 10 minutes per pound at 325 degrees. Times 10 is 100 minutes. That's, uh, that's an hour and a half plus 10 minutes is the way I look at it. The thing you need to know about a pre-cooked ham is that it's already cooked. All we're really doing is warming it up. Some of you have had questions about how do I how do I cook a ham so that it's not dry when I serve it and it doesn't dry out sitting on the table? Those are important questions and we're going to talk about that. So first thing you want to do is remove your ham from this netting. Save your glaze packet. Don't you feel in there, you'll feel it's kind of crunchy. There's going to be some instructions that'll be right here about how to do the glaze. Sometimes the glaze is already um, like a liquid and all you do is cut it off and pour it over. Sometimes it's a powder and you mix it with some water, mix it up, pour that over. Anyway, it's easy and the instructions will be on the back of the label. So save your label, save your glaze packet, and for heaven's sake, save this because you may need to look at it. Remove the netting and then you'll see it's in this beautiful foil packet. Now I bought my ham at Walmart, but um, it's generally the same wherever you buy them. And then inside here, you'll see that it's shrink wrapped. Inside, you can zoom in if you want. It's shrink wrapped inside of this packet. And if you look, there's juices inside of there. Now, I do not want you to throw those juices away. I want you to reserve those because they will help steam the ham and keep it um, juicy while it's cooking. So, take very clean scissors. I've already washed my hands prior to this video. And we're going to cut a little hole in the bottom to let those juices drain out. You should get about a quarter to a half a cup of juice in there. It kind of depends. All right. Then I'm going to cut the rest of the plastic off. If you have any questions about the pan, this is just a standard roasting pan. I put a link on the post back at Lowe's and Dishes for this type of um, roasting pan. The thing you look for in a roasting pan is a nice thick bottom and you want some decent sides on it. The sides don't have to be so thick. These are kind of flimsy actually, but you want some good handles because you're going to put some heavy things in that pan over time. Turkeys, hams, that kind of thing. And you need to be able to get it out of the oven with some confidence. So good handles are important. So when you get your ham out, you'll see that it's cut already. See that? The cut goes down to the bone. So it's important for your ham to kind of stay together. You don't want to pull it all apart. But it's only going to be cut back to about well, this one's not even cut back as far as they usually are. It's gonna be, this is just gonna be a chunk of meat when you get done. You can cut it yourself, but those pieces are gonna be really tight, tiny. I like to save that to cook with pinto beans or, or some other kind of bean. You can find that recipe on loaves and dishes too. So, here you go. This is all you do. Put your ham in here. Make sure it's all together as much as possible. You can see that's not a lot of juice in the bottom of the pan, so I'm going to add about a half a cup of chicken stock in there. And then I'm going to take heavy duty foil, heavy duty foil, and I'm going to cover this very tightly. I'm going to wrap this really good in aluminum foil. It's going to be very tight, and I'm going to put it in the oven. I'm going to leave it alone for an hour and 20 minutes probably. Then I'm going to mix up that glaze, pour that over, 
put it back in the, put the aluminum foil back on very tightly, put it back in the oven and let it finish cooking. So remember, the, you're, you're not cooking this ham, this ham's already cooked. You're heating it up, big difference there. And the point of heating it up is to keep it juicy, so don't overcook it. That's the number one thing you wanna remember. Don't overcook it, just cook it. Just enough to warm it up. And then when you serve it, how to keep it dry, keep from drying out on the table is to put just enough slices for however many you're going to serve on your platter. So I, today I'm going to have about 15 people for dinner. Um, I will put probably half of this in slices on my platter and I'll leave the rest in here covered up so it stays moist. And then people will pass the platter, they'll get their piece of ham and um, I'll, I'll refill the platter. That's how you keep it from getting so dried out of the table. All right, well that's it. I hope you've enjoyed learning about spiral sliced ham. Read the post, there's a lot more great information in there. Your chart for how long to cook your ham will be in there, and I'll see you next time.